It's about almost five after, and uh, I'm wondering how many people forgot to turn back their clocks. <laughs> Our liturgists forgot. Yeah, even with all of my Facebook memes and Devo and Share, people still forgot to turn back their clocks. Well, anyway, it's good to see everyone here this morning uh, as people are still shuffling in. Um, we do have a, a, a couple of announcements to make, or a few announcements to make. One, we, um, our studies are continuing. Uh, two on Tuesday, the uh, 1215, through the uh, Acts of the Apostles. 6 p.m., we are in the book of Ecclesiastes. And then 845 on Sunday morning, the pastor's class, we are still moving through Reformed Theology with Shirley Guthrie's book. Um, a couple things that happened, uh, well, one thing that happened last week that was a huge success, and I would like to thank everyone here in the sanctuary that participated, was the Habitat House bill that we provided the lunch. It was um, very, 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 very well received by uh, those young men and women who were working on that home. They come from, they were here from Hiram College in Ohio, and it was very cold and windy that day, and when we got there with hot pans of lasagna, and cookies, and brownies, and salad, I mean, those young people came right to the table, and they had firsts, and seconds, and some had thirds. <laughs> <laughs> you know, thirds of lasagna for me, I'd be taking a nap back in the construction area afterwards. Um, but they were very, very appreciative, and they enjoyed it very much, and uh, thank you. For, um, for doing that. I know we made that uh, meal very special for them. And we stayed there and, and we helped serve and, and speak with the people and, uh, and they were very appreciative. So thank you to all who participated in that. It was a, it was a big success. I don't know if they're used to getting peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. But when they got our lasagna, they were very happy. So thank you. Um, also, today's uh, flowers, our sanctuary flowers, are placed in celebration of the 62nd wedding anniversary of Bob and Sue Moore. So congratulations. Congratulations. Are there any other announcements this morning? Anything I missed? And I'm sure there comes Alan. <laughs> um, uh, if you ordered script last week, uh, Stephanie has your orders ready for you in, in uh, Fellowship Hall. And um, we, uh, uh, as I announced last week, Lou and I are putting together a celebrate pie with pie day for next Sunday, March 18th. And we're going to have a grand pie buffet. And uh, there's a sign-up sheet downstairs if you want to bring a pie for the buffet to share. And we're also going to have the tastiest pie contest, a pie baking contest. There's a sign-up down there if you want to enter the contest. We thought we had a lot of fun with it. and. We uh, have two judges, who better than mathematician Dr. Billy Rhodes and um, great American pie lover, Billy is. And our celebrity judge is going to be uh, Miss IU, Sophia Padgett. And um, we have several prizes, including a pie safe um, for that. And also, <clears throat> we've begun planning the uh, Easter breakfast. And I'll be in fellowship hall and come around and talk to you and see if you would like to uh, participate in uh, cooking, baking, or preparing something um, for the breakfast, and that's being put on jointly by the fellowship team and the worship team. Thank you, Al. Any other announcements this morning? Hearing none? I have one. Oh, we do have one. Yes, I am not John Bennett. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, thank you. Our guest Liturgist this morning, <laughs> Fatty Adad, Dr. Fatty Adad, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, I wonder if Jan did not set his clock back this morning. <laughs> uh, they say it's a weird day. Uh, I think Florida is voting to get rid of it. I think we should all just keep doing the fallback. All right. <laughs> Such a wonderful day. Let us worship God.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Kelly. That was wonderful. Thank you. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. I can do all things through Jesus. <coughs> Amen. 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 Please join me to the call of to worship found in your bulletin. Worship our God, companion and guide. God, God is close to us in terrible times and in wonderful times. God give us all we need. God lead us to places that restore our souls. Let us worship this God, whose constancy we can count on. Join me with the opening hymn, Father, we pray in thee, on page 459, and for those who can stand, please stand.
talking about a very well-known passage of scripture, along with some other scripture that surround it. John 3.16. Does anyone have that memorized in this congregation? Let's say it. God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. Did you get that? It is a very well-known verse, and it's not only is that verse important, but the whole passage. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, a priest who came to see him, a Pharisee. He kind of snuck to see him at night, so none of his friends would know that he was coming. Nick at night, he even remembers my sermon title. <laughs> very good. I have a gold star, you get one. Um, and he snuck to go see Jesus because he had questions about what is it like afterwards? Do we live on? Do we have eternal life? And Jesus says, yes. If you believe in me, then you will have eternal life. Because the next verse talks about that Jesus did not come to judge, but he came to save. And so as the church, it is our responsibility to emulate this light, to show this light to our world, to our friends, to our neighbors, to everyone. And we do it by being good people. We do it by being kind, by being compassionate. We do it by being able to talk about who Jesus is and what he means to us. That Christ came to this world because he loves us. And because through him, one day we will all be together in Christ's kingdom. A kingdom of love and compassion where there is no pain. We will all be together with God. So for us, our responsibility is to show this light to the world. Because Christ is this light that leads us the way. So as we live our lives, be kind, be gentle, be courteous, be good to your neighbors, be good to each other. And this is the light that helps shine the way so people can learn to understand just how special Jesus is to our world. Let us pray. Heavenly Lord, we are so thankful 
that you came here to be with us as a man and as God, to show us the way to be our light, that we might understand that eternal life is possible through you and that you were here to teach us, not to judge us, but to show us how it is done. In Christ we pray. Amen. Okay, our song today is number six. I love you, Lord. John 3.16. In calligraphy. Oh, okay, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Come on, bro. Okay, Jan. <laughs> Please join me in the prayer of confession found in your bulletin. God of life and love, we, we humble, humble ourselves, ourselves this day, day to ask forgiveness, forgiveness for the wrongs we have done. We have lived in darkness rather than seeing the light of your love for us and all your children. We have failed to live out your compassion and light to others. Our eyes have been closed, our spiritual blindness has caused hurt and degradation, it has caused dishonesty and arrogance. In our moments of doubt, give us courage to believe in you. When you ideas present themselves to us, open our eyes to new visions, new understanding, and boldness in living into those ideas. Save us and help us through Christ we pray. Amen. To listen to the assurance of pardon. God, who is rich and mercy, out of the great love with which God loved us, even when we were dead through our sins. God made us alive together with Christ and raised us up with him. For by grace you have been saved to face, and this is not your own doing. This is a gift of God. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, our first reading comes from the first gospel, uh, our first gospel reading comes from John chapter 3, verse 14 to 18. And as we have mentioned earlier, you know, uh, carved into the wood of this cross is the verse 316, which is in Arabic. We okay, have the same cross here that we have back in our church back in Lebanon. So let us start, let's hear the word of God. John 3, and it's going to be uh, 14 to 18. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his own and only Son, for that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's 
one and only Son. This is the word of God to the people of God. Praise, Praise be to God. God. We continue with chapter 3, verse 19 in John's Gospel. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John 3.16. A favorite at sporting events everywhere. <laughs> Why? I have no idea. And that's coming from a theologian. Um, and we did, we recited it earlier. It is one verse in a very well-known passage. Jesus' discussion with Nicodemus. And like many of Jesus' teachings in John's Gospel, the passage challenges the hearer to understand Jesus as the Christ, the light of the world. Our section opens with Jesus taking the normal and doing with it something not so normal, which is very typical of Jesus, right? He would take something and just kind of turn it upside down on its head. He liked doing that. From the Hebrew scriptures, we have the bronze serpent. The story of the Israelites in the wilderness speaking out against Moses and God. The Israelites were grumbling one day. Why have you taken us out here? We were so good in Egypt. <laughs> Memory. No food, no water, and we detest this man. Poor stuff. <laughs> so in response to the grumbling, we're told that the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people. And many died. Well, of course, their tune then changed from grumbling to pleading. They pleaded with Moses, please get rid of these serpents. So God tells Moses to make a serpent of bronze and place it on a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, to have that individual look and focus upon the bronze serpent. And they would live. Life from a serpent. So Jesus continues. Just as Moses lifted up that serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. So according to Jesus, like the bronze serpent that is lifted up in the wilderness for the Israelites to look at, so must the Son of Man be lifted up for eternal life. And the Son of Man, a title that comes from Ezekiel bin Adam, the Son of Man is a title that Jesus took. Jesus, fully divine and fully human, must be lifted up. Life coming from someone in human form. Now God is an uncanny way of turning things upside down to make a point. As these two passages are connected with each other. Looking first at numbers, we take a step back. Pretending that this is the first time we're hearing this story. <clears throat> it's kind of an odd story. 
is it not? Think about it. What brings life from the deadly serpents that are slithering around and biting people? A bronze serpent. The animal that is usually connected with death now brings life. Now looking second at John's text, what does it say about Jesus? Who has to be lifted up for the believer to obtain eternal life? The earthly son of a Jewish carpenter. Hmm. It is Jesus, the fully divine and fully human, the son of man, the one who shares something with all of humanity. A human body, human emotions, the ability to feel pain, compassion, love, anger, sorrow. Our text is about salvation. Salvation from serpents and salvation from the grave, granting us all eternal life. God did not become incarnate, we are told through our passage, to judge us, but to save us. Christ came to live amongst us that we might be saved through him. Now the challenge of this passage comes as Christ advises that all of creation is affected by this broken condition talk about this in our theology class this morning. It's condemned already. See, you knew that Jesus was a Calvinist. <laughs> Jesus saying the world is condemned already. As Christ came to redeem and to restore creation, he came to be the light in the midst of darkness. As a teacher, he came to teach us what it meant to be a human being. As a friend, he came to teach us how to love and to be compassionate to one another. As a revolutionary, he taught us how to challenge injustice and to stand for the least of these. <coughs> and as a savior, he came to bestow upon us the gift of grace, granting us eternal life and removing the sting of death, giving us the keys to God's um, eternal kingdom. Excuse me. By being the light of the world, Christ turns it upside down, giving us an amazing freedom. We are allowed now to live life no longer defined by the world, but by Jesus' gospel. By a new way of looking at things. Because we live, we all live under earthly kingdoms as people did then. And yet Jesus talked about a kingdom coming that would look very different from anything our world has ever seen. And let's face it, God has never done anything blasé. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Perhaps Jesus does these things or taught like this because it's hard to get our attention. Think of the prophets. How many times do prophets try to warn kings of the old? Change your ways. God doesn't like what you're doing. And people would say, oh, uh, go away, go away, go away. And the prophets would have to get creative. Sometimes they built dioramas. Sometimes they ran through the city naked. They would do <laughs> lots of things to try to get people's attention. And they still would say, ah, go away, go away, go away. Until God's judgment came and then they said, well, oh, maybe we should have listened to that crazy prophet. So sometimes God has to be creative to get our attention. I mean, it's kind of radical for Israelites to have to look at a bronze statue of the thing that is killing them to begin with. Well, you're dying from the serpent, so focus on the serpent of bronze. You will be healed. I mean, it's 
radical for God to raise Jesus from the grave. It just doesn't happen every day, right? Granting us eternal life. God does things in big ways. God does not fit neat and tidy into a box. Although we try to do that sometimes, don't we? We like to take God and say, well, you can't do that. Surely, you no, no, that's not okay. So we're going to fit you into this nice little box here and behave. As we try to make God in our own image, instead of coming to the understanding that we are made in God's image. So God does not fit neatly into any box we can try to construct. Sometimes we need God to turn our world upside down, to take our norms and what we feel is correct or comfortable and say, no, not this way. Again, recalling last week's message briefly, we talked a little bit about, I spoke with Bob a little bit in the narthex after the sermon, that the word of God should uh, comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfort. It's meant to shake things up. The gospel is meant to go against the grain. It is meant to cause all of us to take a step back and say, huh, am I doing all I could be doing? Am I doing what I should be doing? How is Christ challenging me in my life to do more? To be more Christ-like in my actions with my church, and with my neighbors, and with my enemies. <laughs> with all I am commanded to love, be compassionate with. Because this is how we grow. We grow when we are pushed outside of our comfort zones. And God likes growth. Especially when it's us. So throughout this Lenten season, seek Christ, allowing Christ's transformative love to challenge the church, to challenge all of us. We are challenged to embody this light, that is Jesus Christ, and it is this light that can change the world. It is this light that challenges people to be better. It is this light that says, love each other, turn your cheeks, spread my gospel, love the least of these, care for the most vulnerable, be their champion. It is that light, it is that gospel, as Jesus came into this world to save us, to judge us, to lead us through this wilderness called life, to teach us what it means to be a human being. To God be all the glory, honor, and praise this day and every day. Amen. Amen. This is like a puzzle. <laughs> We have now come to the point within our worship service where we are able to lift up concerns that are troubling us, where we are able to lift up prayer requests to share with each other and to share with God. It is also the opportunity for us to express our joys, thanking God, excuse me, for things that are, have occurred or are occurring within our own lives. So what things do you have that you would like to lift up? Yes, Patty. Continue prayer for my son, Harley. Yes, and Patty, I apologize. My wife told me that I, I said Harvey and not Harley last week. I apologize. Yes. Sure. Yes. Any other requests? Yes, Andy. Yeah, my friend Joel, um, <clears throat> just had a, a kind of wise mom just died. Is dad's in assisted living and was just in and out of the hospital and his brother's 
been in assisted living due to mental issues, and he's been having to go up there in the, up in the region, so he's had to go up there a lot, just has a lot on his plate, so prayers for him, his wife Chandra, and uh, his family. So he's dealing with loss and also um, illness. Ongoing stuff and yeah. just a lot on his plate. Yes, Alan. Yes, I'm sorry. It's okay. I, as you uh, most of probably know, my cousin Jean did pass away Thursday. Um, a prayer of thanks for all of you that did good thoughts and prayers and wishes. And thank God that all five of his children and all five of their spouses were able to be there with him when he passed, as well as his <coughs> wife and his mom, my Aunt Nita, who's 90 years old. We ask uh, for continued prayer for the whole family, especially uh, Aunt Nita. And uh, I really appreciate everything that everyone's done. And um, in your bulletin, if you look uh, <coughs> under the United Presbyterian Church uh, prayer request, um, You'll see about Richard and Ian Ryan. Uh, Richard passed away last week, and John and Colleen Swanson were very close friends of them. So they're today they're traveling up to Michigan for the services, which are tomorrow. And John and Colleen asked for travel mercies. We pray for travel mercies for them, and that we uh, pray for Ian and Richard's entire family. And um, John also said that many people who are understand what he said it's going to be in a very real, authentic Irish way to the funeral. <laughs> Thank you. Alan? <clears throat> Sarah, you had a hand up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, Bob. Yes. Continue your prayers for Sarah. Mm -hmm. um, and Joy, we have Ken Hay visiting. Is Kanye, right? Okay. Thank you. Yes, Linda. Travel mercies for our wonderful Michelle Birch. Going south of Dixon Line? I'm going to Virginia. Oh, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Family. Yeah, south of Dixon Line. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being with us today. And Miriam, for your hands. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other prayer requests? Don, he's laughing at me. So when I was laughing, I can't control so <laughs> no, no. We're praying for her. We're praying for her. She reminded us about the, the time change. Yeah, the time change. She forgot. But. <laughs> <laughs> Is there nothing changed? <laughs> yes, I guess prayers for all who are affected by the time change this morning. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're well. <laughs> all right. Uh, hearing no other prayer requests, let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Lord, we are so thankful for what you mean for us and for all you do for us. And we thank you for the gift of laughter and the ability to enjoy life and to enjoy each other. Uh, with that, we would take our lives way too seriously. And so 
thank you for that. <coughs> Lord, we lift up our world to you. <clears throat> we lift up areas of the world that are not so calm. We lift up regions that are divided and torn by war and civil unrest, especially for the innocent, for the women and children and men and elderly who are stuck in the middle of crossfire. We lift up, especially people in Syria who still continue to live with the threat of daily violence. We lift them up to you. Lord, we lift up our, our nation. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we ask you to be with our government. <clears throat> We ask you to be with our president, our courts, our leaders, those men and women who create and enforce laws. We ask that they are just and fair to all people living within our great land. We ask you to be with those within our community who are ill, who are sick, those who struggle with depression or anxiety. We ask that you bring them solace, calm their minds. Lord, we are so encouraged that our prayers do not fall upon deaf ears. That you hear our prayers that we are reading aloud this morning and you hear the prayers that are said in silence by someone's bedside. Thank you. Lord, we just ask you to be with us and to be with our community of faith here in Bloomington, Indiana. So as we say, Lord, please hear our prayers. We lift up our community of faith. Lord, we lift up the Swansons as they travel to Michigan for the funeral of a close friend, uh, Richard Ryan. We ask that they arrive safely in Michigan and that they are comforting to Anne and to Richard's family as a grief with loss. Please be with them. And also, at, we ask that they arrive safely back home when they return. Lord, we lift up prayers for Harley. You know what, what is going on within his life. We just ask you to be with him and, uh, and to, uh, to impact his life and to bring peace within his soul. Lord, we lift up Joel, Andy's friend, uh, and his wife Chandra and their family as they're dealing with a full plate they're dealing with loss and illness. We just ask that you give them the strength to be able to deal with all that is going on within their world right now, but also to give them the opportunity to step back when able to and to get some rest and to have some time of Sabbath, as we know that is important for all of us. That we all have our filling points. So please, give Joel and Chandra and their family the Sabbath that they need so that they are able to handle the issues that have come up to them, family members that they need to care for. Lord, we lift up Alan's cousin Jean who passed away recently. Uh, we thank you for his life and as we are so grateful that his family was all able to be there, including his mother Nita. We just ask that you be there as they celebrate his life and they mourn his loss. Comfort them all and um, give them the space to do so uh, as they celebrate and mourn and remember. Be with them throughout this period. Lord, we lift up prayers uh, for Grandma uh, Waters who is going in uh, to surgery. Uh, we just ask you to be with her as she prepares to go into surgery calm any nerves she may have, relieve any anxiety, and we just ask that you be with those surgeons and doctors and nurses as they are there to care for her. We are so thankful that they are there with their <coughs> gifts and their skills. Be with them, and we thank you for them. Lord, we lift up Ann Roddick, who is uh, receiving treatments. We just ask you to be with Ann as she battles uh, cancer. Uh, give her strength and give her the ability to rest and allow her body to fight. Lord, we lift up prayers for Sarah Cochran, who also is struggling with her illness. And yet she is so positive 
and so upbeat, and she enjoys every day with her son, with her family, and with her friends here in Bloomington. Lord, she is a true example for all of us uh, throughout this tri trying time. So we just ask that you continue to uplift her, continue to keep her spirits high, uh, and then when she has periods of, of lowness and doubt, be with her and lift her up, uplift her. Again, she is such an amazing piece of this community, and um, like I said, the way she is handling this is an example for us all. She is a blessing. Allow us to be a blessing back to her as well. And we have a joy, of course, that Kung Ye is here visiting us and also visiting her friend Sarah Cochran. We are grateful that she arrived safely. We just hope her time in Bloomington is fruitful and pleasant. We ask that her visit with Sarah goes well. And, uh, and when she does return back to her home, that uh, she arrives safely to be back with her family. Lord, we ask for traveling mercies for Michelle Lurch, who is traveling uh, to Virginia uh, for break. We ask that she arrives safely, and that when it's time to return, she also returns safely. And we ask that she has a good and restful break. And finally, we ask for prayers for Miriam's hands, that they receive healing, um, and that um, she is not in pain, so a relief from the pain in her hand. Lord, we thank you for so many things. There are so many prayers that are left unsaid, and yet you know what they are before they leave our lips. Thank you. Thank you for being the type of God who cares about our daily life, our pains, our sufferings, our joys. You are there when we are, are crying, and you are there when we are dancing. You are the God of all seasons, and for that, we love you and we thank you. As we prepare to close this prayer, let us use the words that Christ Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are told that the Lord loves the cheerful giver. We now have the opportunity to give back a portion of which God has so generously given to us. Freely as you have been given, freely give.
Heavenly Lord, we are thankful that you are a kind and generous God. Lord, we ask that you take this, a portion which you have given to us in return, to help edify your kingdom now and your kingdom yet to be revealed. In Christ's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing as we prepare our, uh, to sing our closing hymn for our worship service. Hymn number 538, Lord, dismiss us with thy blessing. has been entrusted with this light, a beacon of sort that should draw people to the church and to the understanding of who Christ is. But like a lamp, it should not be placed under a bushel basket. It needs to be put in the open. That means we must be out in the open, sharing the gospel of Christ with our neighbors, with the lost, with the broken, with the hurting. We do it by our words, and more importantly, we do it by our actions, by when we serve, and when we love, and when we show compassion, and when we are caring, and when we are feeding, and when we are clothing. This is how people see the light that has been entrusted to us. So we go and be that light that shines like a beacon, drawing people to Christ, to eternal life, and to a world much better. May the love of Christ, the peace of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Ghost go with you on this day and every day. And as always, go in peace. Mm -hmm.